Welcome back to ctntworld.com. The number for you to call is 622-4141. That's 622-4141, extension 4. You can send us a text message. Type the word HELP, H-E-L-P. Leave a space, type your question and or comment, and send everything to 4913. And you can also send us an email, questions at ctntworld.com. We've been joined and set by psychologist Daryl Joseph. Daryl, thank you for joining us once again. My and pleasure. Of course, we're still with Lisa Corbett, who's telling her story of abuse and survival, even from as early as two years old, through her, uh, uh, her young years into her teenage years, and even as a young adult, her father sexually abusing her. And, and just before the break, but Daryl, she spoke about the issue related to the fact that I guess it's very painful for people in that situation that the one person you think you should turn to and get help, your mother, is also a kind of abuser, well, like an abuser in, yeah. in a way. Yes, because she ends up being part of the whole cycle of dysfunctional behavior. She too becomes a victim of this situation. And I mean, the, the reasons why that happens so could be varied. In some cases, it has a lot to do with financial reasons. The person may be uh, financially dependent upon... E especially during the 60s, 70s, yes, 80s, when yes. women weren't as independent yes. in, in terms of in the workplace. But even, and even if they do, mm -hmm. they do there's still, I guess, the, the issue of the power and control. That's right. Issue. Even more so, I would say, in 2012, uh, issues of self-esteem and esteem dependence, let's call it that, mm -hmm. upon the, in the case of a male person being the abuser, um, their self-esteem is tied to approval from that individual and the worst thing for, to happen to them is for this person to disapprove of them in any way at all. They want to keep in good graces, they want to keep in a good light and so on. Um, I mean, it sounds very, very simple when you talk about it like this, huh? but to actually see the dynamic playing itself out is quite complex and it's quite crippling. So a mother would prefer not rock the boat, as it were, Yes. and, and, and confront the father. Yes even though she knows or is well, very, very almost sure that she, the father is abusing the, one of the children? Very often, the mother in this instance will be in denial. Huh? Mm -hmm. Because um, number one, it, it may be just too intense to think about the possibility reality of that actually happening. Two, as you said, the whole idea of rocking the boat, it may be easier to just simply come up with another reason why the child is saying that rather than face it head on. As with Lisa, she became the other woman. So mm -hmm. she's now the wrong person in this. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Lisa, let's hear about how you, you transitioned from that. You migrated. Mm -hmm. I migrated. But even before that, at the age of 16, I had a nervous breakdown. And, um, you know, that would continue, you know, on a consistent basis. basis. You know, I dealt with that. And then um, I migrated because I said, you know, the only, reason, the only way I'd be able to get away from this is to move to another country, <laughs> which is what I did. Um, because of the low self-esteem and, and feeling that you're not worth anything and um, looking for what I call looking for love in all the wrong places. It, it, you know, um, I entered into a lot of bad relationships. Um, the final one, well, not the final one, but I got married to um, an American. I lived in California and he was extremely abusive. So I went into this abusive relationship thinking this was all that, that I deserved. And so I dealt with emotional abuse, mental abuse, sexual abuse all over again. Within your marriage? Within the marriage. Daryl, what's the dynamic playing off here? Is it that the abuser looks for these type of types of personalities or is it that the abuse sometimes seeks, unfortunately, in a dysfunctional way, seeks out that type of person? Okay, I'll build on something that I began talking about last week um, where we were speaking about this whole idea of um, behavior imprinting upon a person's subconsciousness from an early age. Okay, and upon the idea of what the child learns in the home. And I was saying that a child observing their parents, and we're saying parents here loosely because parents can be caregiver, any mm -hmm. kind of caregivers, okay? Children observing their parents' behavior, they learn how men behave in a relationship, how women behave in a relationship. They learn how conflict should be resolved. Mm -hmm. They learn what tools and strategies for resolving um, disagreements and so even on are valid. Even if dysfunctional resolution. Yes, even if they're dysfunctional, they learn those things, okay? No. In your conscious mind as an adult, you may tell yourself, you know, I'm, I, I don't want somebody who is violent, I don't want somebody who is abusive, and so on, okay? But the characteristics of those parents that you would have observed as a child are imprinted upon you. And, you know, there, there's a mixture of good and bad. The, the person who um, is abusive, typically, one of their characteristics is that they tend to be very jealous people, yes. okay? But in early courtship, jealousy can mask itself as being very attentive, mm -hmm. being very caring, so they're calling me every half an hour to see where I am. And oh gosh, but they're in love with me. You know, they, they, they're so concerned about me. But it's really that jealousy and that insecurity playing itself out there. So you having observed certain behaviors and certain personality traits in your parents, those things being imprinted on your subconsciousness, 
in kind of, you know, it's, it's hidden to you in the conscious mind, but you begin looking for or being attracted to persons who exhibit similar traits. The, the number to call is 622-4141, extension 4, that's 622-4141. 4141 extension for if you know of someone who is in, a, in an abusive situation. If you yourself uh, are going through an abusive relationship and you want help answers in terms of identifying ways to get out of it, to, to find resolution, we'd like you to call us also, send us a text message or an email. So, so you got married to this person? Yes, I got married to him and uh, you know what Daryl was saying is so true because he used to write me every day. We had a long distance relationship and I would get maybe two letters a day and I thought that he wasn't wow, with me. I was getting attention finally and um, got married him but the signs were there and I didn't see it. And what um, were the signs? Uh, the same thing, just constantly writing each day and being controlling and calling and you know all. And when we say control in simple ways, don't wear this, wear this. Don't wear this, Don't wear talk this. to this person, talk right. to this person. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why are you out so late? Where right, are you? Right. What did yep. you buy that for? Yep. Simple yes. decisions are taken away from you. That's right. Yep. And when I really realized I, that I was in trouble was on my wedding night um, when he looked at me and he said, everything I told you about me is a lie. And um, we, we got married in Canada and uh, he's from California. We're going to move back then. I don't know. People ask me, why did I go, go there with him? I did because I was thought that he loved me, you know, all the attention, I thought it was something. And so I moved back to California with him and it just got very worse, uh, very much worse, um, in terms of being very controlling, um, not allowed to talk unless he said I could talk, um, you know, being shoved and knocked down and, um, uh, you know, just very controlling. Um, I would get very little money to, to run the household, like $20 a week, and he would get angry and would come and, you know, yell at me, scream at me. He would um, cut the, try to isolate me. If I was talking to my family on the phone, he cut the phone wires. He cut the wires in my car. He had guns in the house. He said if I left him, I would die. Um, you know, it's a number of horrendous things, and I stayed in it for five and a half years. Of, what, what was the turning point for you? The turning point for me, I would actually say um, my brother rescued me, even from Trinidad. He called and he said, get out of there now, get out of the situation. Uh, so did my sister, because I was going to stay in it, trying to quote unquote help him, which I couldn't, you know. And um, so I decided um, that I was going to leave. I planned my escape, I literally had to have an escape plan and um, put that together. I was able to get some money from uh, Trinidad and, um, you know, you know, so hid it away and then, you know, did that. I waited until he went to work. He would go, out, go to work for like about four days out of town and then come back and I, I just planned my escape. I, I got, you know, my plane ticket and um, I had someone, you know, take me to the airport. I left a note saying that I was gone. Um, it, was, it was just horrendous. I can't talk about all of it. <laughs> Dara, in terms of people in the situation and realizing that if I don't leave the situation, I could end up dead, what's the way out at that point? Is it that you really, like, like Lisa said, plan your escape? You do. You really do. You really honestly do. Um, I have um, clearly dealt with a number of um, clients in similar situations, and part of the plan of action, as we call it, the POE, the plan of action, mm -hmm. includes an escape plan, mm -hmm. specific details what day, what time, it has to be at a time when the person is not home, when they're not going to be around, where are you going to, how secure is it, those kinds of details, you have to work those things out because in really bad and severe situations, you don't know how the abuser is going to react. What about agencies, state agencies that should be offering help in, in terms of someone to call if you know you're in an abusive situation? Shouldn't that be an option also? Well, I know that we have, um, you know, please, I'm not the expert on that per se, but I know that we have the domestic abuse hotline, I think it is. I don't remember mm -hmm. the number of them, but I know there's a hotline where you can call. Now, as to whether they have facilities in place mm -hmm. for persons to go to, should they be in that situation, that I'm not certain about. But I know that there are agencies, there are state agencies, and the domestic abuse hotline is one that you can call. We're talking to abuse survivor Lisa Corbett and psychologist Daryl Joseph. I keep sending those text messages. We'll share a few with you after a break for the play with draw. The text uh, code is help. Leave a space, send everything to 4913. You can also send an email to questions at ctntworld.com. Welcome back to ctntworld.com. We're with uh, Lisa Corbett, who's telling us a story of survival of abuse uh, from as, as early as two years old uh, through her young years as a child and into uh, an abusive marriage. And also with us is psychologist Daryl Joseph. We're going to get to some solutions. We also have many text messages which are backed up. You can also call us at 622-4141, extension 4. We'd like to hear your stories and your contributions. So, Lisa, let's fast track now because we have very little time left. You, how, so you got away, you planned your escape and, and you, you got away. Yes. T tell us how you 
resolve this within yourself though because I mean at the end of the day you've gone through quite a cycle of abuse or yes. many cycles of abuse yes definitely quite a cycle um really just my faith in God I became a born-again Christian and began to have a really intimate relationship with the Lord because that's the thing that was really missing in my life wanting to have a relationship with my mother wanting to have a relation with my father even with my ex-husband and so I, I came to that point where I said you know I just you know give my life to the Lord and First, right, you know, it, it, yes a definitely yes. We have Beatham on the line. Beatham, good evening thank you for joining us. Go ahead, please. Yes, good afternoon, Paul. Hi, good evening. And good afternoon to the panel and the pastor. Um, my situation is something very identical, right? But um, I have a question, please. And if possible, could someone contact me after the program? Okay. If a person is not physically abused, but all the other forms of abuse are there, how can one really go about proving, like, if they need help then, in order to get that situation rectified, be it concerning, like, a divorce issue and all that? How can one really go about proving that there is such a thing as abuse minus the physical. Because the long and short of it is that um, within the last five years, my husband has, has unwillingly put me out through verbal abuse and threats to my life, and I am presently having nowhere to live, had to end up staying in a situation where I'm getting a shelter. Now, there is no problem with that because I have family, but they turn their backs on me. Basically, I'm trying to seek my divorce with the help of legal aid, stuff like that. And the point is my husband has been unreasonable because he does not want to come forth for us to get this whole thing rectified. And it's kind of creating a, back, a sort of backlash for me in little areas where I have to try and formulate my, my case as it were. But without he being there hearing the truth about it, for him to defend or not defend what is the situation, I need to get some input. Please, this is off air we'd after like, a while. We'd like you to stay on the line. Our producers will take your numbers off here. And thank you very much for sharing. Uh, Daryl and Lisa, that's a very... Good question, mm -hmm. because very often we think you have to be physically hit exactly. to be abused. <laughs> in, oh, and, and there's yes, emotional, psychological, neglect is yes. abuse. Withholding of what you Affection. need to mm -hmm. live is abuse. Absolutely. Yes, it is. It is. Absolutely. Daryl. Yeah, um, I, well, I can, we can identify physical abuse. We can identify emotional abuse. We can identify sexual abuse, which often takes place within the relationship. Mm -hmm. Then there's something like social abuse, where you're insulted in public and you're, yes. you're put down in front of other people and so on. Um, there's even spiritual abuse, your values, your morals, the things that you consider to be very dear and important mm -hmm. to you, where those things are dragged through the mud and you're told you're stupid for believing those things mm -hmm. and that you shouldn't and so on. So there's various types of abuse. It's just that physical abuse gets the headlines, it's more sensational, yes. you know, we tend to see it more. But the other types of abuse actually often occur before physical because abuse. Yes, there's, exactly. there's a leader. It's a builder. Exactly. Yeah. Is that so, your case? Yeah, it is, yeah. Because, you know, we, we think that it happens overnight, but it doesn't. There is a build-up. And so the, the type of thing that she's describing, that leads up to physical abuse. So, so you, God and spirituality played yes. a major role in, in, in your healing. Yes. And you were able to turn it around in terms of, in terms of writing a book. Yes. Let's hear about that. Yeah, I actually wrote a book. You know, I was pretty silent about a lot of what I went through before. And um, I came to a place where God, you know, just instructed me. I, I just decided I was going to write this book that, you know, to help women. And so I wrote the book and I just told everything, you know, um, in the book to help a lot of different women. And um, the book was released a couple of years ago and women have been coming forth in Trinidad in the United States because people just want to know you have to really break the silence somebody people came out and say boy I couldn't talk before and your family yeah. in some instances turned against you for telling the truth well well my family is it's understandable because they, they, not that they really but what happened is that the first reaction that you would get uh, from family members would be shame and they feel bad, they don't know how to deal with it, in denial. And so it's a normal process uh, that, that they go through. We have a text message we'd like to, uh -huh. to get some answers to in terms of uh, someone wanting an answer. When it comes up, we'll read it. So, so you, you wrote the book and you be, were able to form a ministry broken but not destroyed? Yes, exactly. Uh, with the, with the uh, Glory Tabernacle Worship Center. And also, the book, the book is called Sing O Baron by, by, of course, you. Tell us how this played into your life now and you, and you helping others through your experiences. Mm -hmm. Well, um, the book opened a lot more doors um, for me to really minister to a lot of women. As I said, women coming forward and say, look, I've been abused, I'm dealing with this. I mean, women that you would not expect. Uh, they, they're coming and it's out. all walks of life. It's all walks of life. Mm -hmm. You know, the rich, the poor, mm -hmm. the, you know, all kind of women coming forth and say, thank you for writing that book. And each woman said to me that uh, I'm that woman in the book. So it, my life actually, it, it, any, any woman would have gone through. I, I represent every woman. Let me just mm -hmm. say it like that. And so they're able to come forth. I'm really, um, you know, glad. Darrell, how is this? Extremely. I wish I could put a number on it. 
Um, I don't have that kind of evidence that kind of, well, I mean, it's just difficult to gauge that kind of thing because, I mean, you're talking about people breaking their own confidentiality and so on. Mm -hmm. But based upon the number of times it occurs, and I could speak about it from within our work context, within the, num the number of times this type of situation comes up to me, the ratio is relatively high. Uh, the, the numbers to we've, we've got uh, uh, quite a number of numbers that you can call to get help 800 save that's 800 save you can also check call families in action at 628-2333 that's families in action 628-2333 there's the rape crisis society at 622-7273 622-7273 and the trinidad tobago coalition against domestic violence 624-0402 let's go to maribel maribel you're on the air good evening thank yeah. you for joining us hello yes um, i would like to ask uh, the psychologist that there is a law called the law of attraction and that everybody does everything to themselves and nobody does anything to you if we believe this then we have to believe that as you sow so shall you reap well, even if it's a two-year-old or a 50-year-old, whatever happens to people, they do it to themselves because of what they have seen from example and what they have learned from example. This is a great law that exists in the Book of Life. I, I would like your comment on this, sir. Thank you. Um, the key phrase in that whole thing there is if you believe in that, okay? And I think that it hinges upon that. Um, and, and how does a two-year-old bring no, personally, incest on oneself? Yeah, personally, exactly. I don't. No, personally, yeah. I absolutely do not we subscribe to that. We appreciate your comment. I mean, it, yes. it kind of re-victimizes. It's re-victimization. Yes. Re it sounds as though you cause your own damage. Right. And, and, and it doesn't put responsibility on the, on, on the abuser. No, and that goes contrary to everything I believe professionally oh, yeah, exactly. and personally. 30 seconds left. Lisa, your closing comments for someone looking on who mm -hmm. wants to get out of a situation like well, this. Well, I just want to say that... It, there is hope. You know, a lot of times you feel like it's futile and you're trapped, but there is we hope. We want to absolutely thank you for being yes. with us. Also, Daryl, it's never enough time. We'll be back next Tuesday with another important uh, situation that we can help you with. On behalf of the entire team, have a good evening.